Hello friends, from this lecture I will try to introduce the concept of theory of columns. Now what is a column basically? A column is some sort of a vertical structural member that effectively takes in loads by compression. So if you have a structure above the column, the column what it does is that it transfers the load of the structure above it to a structure below it. So essentially it is some sort of a transferable load member and it effectively takes in the load by compression. Right. So this is the whole concept of color. And what is a strut? A strut is some sort of a short color. Right. This lecture or this exercise will be all about finding at what values or at what positions we should place the load so that there won't be any tensile stresses developed at the cross section of the column. Because if we have tensile stresses developed at the cross section of the column, that effectively means that if we build the column of concrete and concrete is not that good in tension. So essentially, we have tensile stresses and we know that concrete is not good in tension. So effectively, let's place the load in such a way that there won't be any tensile stresses as such. And this is the whole exercise of this lecture. Now, the thing is like this. For example, I have this is suppose my strut and it's rooted to the ground right as we know that it will have three axes suppose this is my y axis this is my x axis and one perpendicular to the board plane is my z axis and i have a force that is equal to p suppose and this is of eccentricity suppose e right now now the cross section of the color will look like some kind of a thing like this right wherein this will be my x and this will be suppose my z axis right now this force p at applied at an eccentricity of e with respect to the y axis will have two effects. Number one, it will create some sort of a compressive force on the strut and number two, it will create some sort of a moment P into E and therefore we can apply the principle of superposition and we can equate this thing to be equal to this wherein this is my strut and I apply a compressive force which is in line with the Y axis plus this wherein this is again my strut and I apply some sort of a moment that is equal to that is a clockwise moment P right and here what we got to do is that we got to find the stress at this section and this section suppose is M N and we got to find the stress at this section at this cross section now at this cross section effectively the compressive force will be due to this. So the compressive force at Mn will be essentially this. And this is of magnitude of P by A. Right. And there would be some sort of a bending stress at this cross section due to P. Now let's draw this thing as a FBD. Right. Wherein this is my section Mn and I apply some sort of an axial, uh, sorry, some sort of a clockwise moment P. To balance this, it will have some sort of an internal moment P, e, which is essentially the bending moment, right? And this bending moment will create some sort of a hogging type of moment in the effect that the fibers, which is at the left side of this y by axis, will be subjected to tension and at the right side will be subjected to compression. So essentially the stress distribution will be like this wherein this is in tension and this all the things are in compression so effectively this will be like this so this is my compressive stresses these are my tensile stresses now suppose the cross section suppose the cross section this is H and suppose this is B right and this suppose is equal to C1 and this suppose is equal to C2. So effectively the stresses, the compressive stress will be equal to PE C1 by I. And the tensile stress will be equal to PE C2 
by i. Now what we got to do is that find out.